everyone. Hey, so we just put out a post asking your opinion, um, what you would prefer if you were going grocery shopping and you needed to buy a bag of sugar, what would you choose from the grocery store? Would you choose the GMO, heavily herbicided Michigan beet sugar? Or would you choose an organic, all natural Michigan beet sugar? And everybody said, of course, B, we would choose, you know, the non-GMO, you know, organic beet sugar from Michigan. We shop local, we love Michigan. Well, kind of a trick question, guys. And we did a contest and we gave away some pies for everyone who participated. A couple of decades ago, I found out that Michigan, all the farmers had stopped using a natural Michigan beet sugar seed. They now use a Michigan engineered, genetically modified, a genetically engineered, and it is engineered with glyphosate. Glyphosate is right in the genome. They have gene spliced the seed to include glyphosate. Why? So that when they plant the seed, they can spray the whole darn field, weeds and plant, and the plant is like inoculated against glyphosate. It's part of that seed. It's part of that body. So they don't see it as a poison. The poison's built into the seed so they can withstand the huge amount of spray that they're spraying their field to combat the weeds. It's all about killing and nuking the weeds. <laughs> it's a war against the weeds. And they had no choice, but they felt that they all needed to switch to this genetically modified seed. So, surprise. And when you go into the grocery store and you pick up that bag of sugar and put it in your cart, you can read all day long on the label. There's nowhere on the label that will tell you that this is a genetically modified organism sprayed with herbicide. And when I found out, because I had been using Michigan sugar in my pies for years, I told you about that in this other video where I was a vendor spotlight for Whole Foods and it went out onto their national website. And as soon as I said, I use all Michigan products, I've told you guys this story before, so many of their followers had commented below, what is the deal with this woman? Why are you buying from this company? She's using genetically modified food. We're, we don't want it. We don't want it in our food system. And so there was hundreds of posts. They, they eventually had to take my video down. I was silly. I didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't know that Michigan Sugar Company had did the switcheroo. They didn't tell me. They didn't pick up the phone. They didn't tell me. So here I was bringing it into my facility, putting it in your pies. And I apologize. I did not know Michigan Sugar. The government didn't tell them that they had to put it on their label, so they didn't. Their salesman never called me and told me, hey, guess what? We're doing a huge switch. This normal food that your body recognizes when it eats it is now going to be modified with Roundup. You can't peel it off, you can't wash it off, you can't scrub it off, it's in there. And so I've talked to farmers, you know, what Big Ag says is that you need this genetically engineered seed, we own the patent on it, you have to buy it from us so that you can buy our other product, Roundup. <laughs> now you can <laughs> spray Roundup on your field. So you guys, maybe you have a bottle of Roundup in your garage or somewhere. I'm probably not talking to a lot of farmers here, but um, as a small farmer, maybe you have a, a small garden plot, maybe you have a flower bed, maybe you use Roundup on your driveway to spray the weeds. But would you go into your vegetable garden and, and take out a shovel of, of soil and turn it upside down and hopefully you see a lot of earthworms? Would you go there and, and would you spray those earthworms or the soil that those earthworms were living on with Roundup? No, we wouldn't. We see the correlation with that. We would not want to poison our soil with herbicides or pesticides. We understand, us small gardeners anyway, understand that there is a lot of good bacteria. There is the protozoa and, and the microarthropods and the nematodes and the mycorrhizal fungi that's bringing up nutrients. There's a whole life in the soil that we can't see. And it's all cycling nutrients within the soil to feed the plant that eventually feeds us. So when we kill off and we spray all of those nutrient cycling organisms, we deplete our food, right? We deplete it, we don't have the nutrition in the soil to feed the plant, and therefore we are lacking the nutrition as well. 
And Big Pharma is probably A-OK -okay with that. They understand that. And that's why they're there to sell you a bottle of vitamins. <laughs> your, your food is depleted of nutrients. You're probably feeling a little crappy. Here, now Bear says you can go to the you know, pharmaceutical aisle and buy some synthetic vitamins that they've also created in a lab for you. So it's just a vicious cycle. And when I talked to farmers, and I read this article the other day, and this reporter was doing this article with this farmer who was planting genetically modified beet seeds. The farmer said, well, I don't want to have to hire employees to weed these fields. Well, yeah, we don't want you to have a whole bunch of people doing back-breaking weeding in that poor field that has tons of weeds. He just wants to be able to go out there on his tractor and psh, spray it. Your field is in such a dilapidated mess because your soil's lacking nutrients because it doesn't have any plants or armor, armor on the soil. When I drive by your field in the middle of winter and it's bare naked, there's not any cover crop over it. It is bare dirt. I see that rain cloud coming over and as soon as that rain drops, hit your field at 35 miles an hour. Have you seen that huge dust cloud coming off of the field right after the first initial rain? You see a dust cloud, just a yellow haze up in the atmosphere. That's soil, that's your topsoil blowing off. You're losing your topsoil because those raindrops weren't able to hit leaves or any kind of organic matter. They hit bare naked soil, boom. So not only did a big puff of dust go up into the atmosphere, but it also compacted your soil. And that's causing another problem, compaction. You as a farmer may know compaction isn't good. So you gotta get out there with your tractor, plow it all up, break up all that hard clay pan, all because you didn't have a cover crop. So plants, get the cover crops on there. You know, do the compost tea. Take Dr. Elaine Ingham's course, she um, has a wonderful soil biology course. You can take Dr. Elaine Ingham. I'll put a link below. Listen to Gabe Brown. He just had another talk at a soil regenerative summit that I attended online. Him and a dozen other people talking about how they farm naturally and organically. And you might not even be certified organic, but I'll support you. If you're in Michigan and you want to move away from the destructive warring against weeds and move towards a different way of thinking of how to control weeds in a natural way and how to create nutritious, healthy product for me to buy, I will support you as you're in that transition. I don't need you to have an organic certification. We just need to know that you are going to farm now in a regenerative manner. You're going to see the importance of carbon sequestration. Maybe you can hire somebody who has a, um, a degree with a microscope and do a soil sample and measure how much carbon you're sequestering. And there's a lot of grant money and there's a, you know, a lot of subsidies to help you with that. Not that a whole lot of farmers that I talk to don't want government handouts. They don't want taxpayer subsidies. You know, there's, there's help out there for you to move into a regenerative way. A lot of you guys, you know, when I spoke at the M M-A-B-A uh, there in Lansing last year. Um, I had one guy that was so mean and miserable and he also had lymphoma that he directly pointed to Monsanto Bear for causing. But he was still said to me, you won't pay me for what it's gonna cost to grow a non-GE seed. You won't pay me for what it's gonna cost to grow grass-fed beef. And I just thought, man, look, why are you assuming <laughs> that I won't pay for high quality nutritious food to feed my family? There's a lot of things I don't do and I won't spend my money on because I don't value them. But I do value good, healthy, nutrient dense food that retains and builds topsoil. I don't value genetically modified soybean oil that's taxpayer subsidized and hurting our soil and washing it off into our rivers and Great Lakes. You know, and you go to the grocery store and probably 90% of the crap that's packaged from food manufacturers, taxpayer subsidized GMO soybean oil in it, or it has and or taxpayer subsidized genetically modified high fructose corn syrup in it. 
So guys, if you're a food manufacturer and you're watching this, we need to band together and we need to say we will not use this cheap food. It, I could sell you pie for $6. I could sell you a pie for a lot cheaper if I was using junky food. And I've asked you guys this before on a survey. If we switch to high fructose corn syrup in our pie versus sugar, would you be happy about that uh, if I lowered the price a dollar? Everybody said, no, no, don't do it. They thought we were actually gonna do it. I was just posing a question to bring home that point. I will not use taxpayer subsidized high fructose corn syrup in my pies. I am not gonna succumb to the big dollar. That seems to be where it's going. It's gonna cost too much money. And who's told you that? Who's told you that you're gonna have to hire 100 migrant workers to pull weeds and that you won't have any profit left at the end of the season? I get it. But who is like putting this poison into your head to believe that? Yeah, I guess what? We found grass, 100% grass fed dairy cows <laughs> up in Mayo, Michigan. There was four farmers that were involved in this co-op. They happened to be Amish. And they rotate their cows to a new fresh paddock of green, luscious, healthy grass every 24 hours. What about in the winter? We've got six months of winter here in Michigan. Well, then they're feeding them wonderful, sweet, high nutrient dense, healthy hay in the winter. But these critters are out on the field. We got in the horse and buggy. <laughs> we went out with Nathan's family. We looked at his beef ranch with um, 350 acres. And he had, I don't know how many Angus out there, but it was a beautiful day. Then we went down to neighbor uh, Marx's field, him and his daughter, his little girls. We went out to his field and petted the cows and saw how healthy and happy and how wonderful everything smelled. We went into Edward's farm and Edward and his son and his father-in-law, the three of them, were milking. And then so we watched the whole operation. It was so much fun. My husband Dave and I just enjoyed that day so much. Small batches, kept in the family. They all have about 40 head of cow, dairy cows, not more than what they can handle, not, you know, not a few, but just right. You know, I always think of America, the land of the plenty. We have an abundance of food. And the Amish and these regenerative farmers were looking at it in such a way, I don't need so much abundance. I need just enough. It's just right. <laughs> it's not too much where I'm just overworked with too much work, taking on more than what we can digest. We're biting off more than what we can chew. How many of us are living that kind of lifestyle where we are you know, taking on more than what we really can handle and we're stressing ourselves out and you know it's affecting our mental health and our physical health and I just loved the lessons that I learned on these Amish farms up here they had just enough so all right guys I'm going to sign off today I appreciate you hanging out here with me this long um, I appreciate you being here today thank you so much we'll see you next week